be possible to look at something else if that's if that's possible please Okay, we can look something else. Then later we can see how we can break this down. Okay. Yeah. No. Let's go on to something completely different. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm puzzled about lesson nineteen. Also, are Jehovah's Witnesses real Christians? That's on page seventy nine, lesson nineteen of Enjoy Life Forever, please. Can you help me to get there, please? Lesson what? Lesson 19. Okay. Okay. You can wait for me. The, the very one I downloaded is an interactive stuff. I'm oh. trying to get there. Right. It's so much quicker, you know, if you just use paper and ink. Um, Forget about all the gadgets. The, just the, use just use paper and ink. Do you want to have ends with less than 12? You get what I'm saying? I'm sorry, could you say that again, please, sir? Is it, do you want with me ends in less than 12? Sorry, I don't understand you. Are, are you at lesson 19? It's page 79. Um, it could be the app I'm using. It's not really giving me the right direction. Okay, just say what is there. Let me hear you out. Right, lesson 19 on page 79. Are Jehovah's Witnesses real Christian? The in introduction is three lines. It says, quote, As Jehovah's Witnesses, we believe that we are real Christians. Why? Consider the basis for our beliefs, the name that sets us apart, and the love we have for one another. Now, my question here would be, I understand your book is saying that Jehovah's Witnesses are real Christians. Do you believe there are real Christians in other groups? When I went to church many years ago, I went to a Baptist and then a Pentecostal church. Do you believe there are there are at least a few real Christians in the Baptists and the Pentecostals? OK, the, the Bible is trying to make things clear to all of us to understand the fact that um, we have people that go to church and we have Jehovah's Witnesses and all of us put together are Christians. But among the Christians, we have real or true Christians. I get to my point. So you're because saying, that, just just make one, when you speak to me, please make one point. Don't make multiple points. Okay. If you make one point, I can think it over and reply. If you, I'm in my 60s. If you make multiple points, by the time you get to point three, I've forgotten your, what you said about point one. When you get to point four, I've forgotten everything you've said before. So are you saying that there are different types of Christian? There are Christians and then there's another group, real Christians. If that's the case, can you show me this in the Bible? Check this scripture. Uh, Matthew twenty four. Okay, Matthew twenty four. Okay, are you there? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. from three from verse three yeah well read it then go on i'm listening okay while he was sitting on the man, mount of olives the disciples approached him privately saying tell us when will these things be and what will be the sign of your presence and of the completion of the system of things in answer, 
Jesus said to them, Look out that nobody misnames you. For many will come on the basis of my name, saying, I am the Christ, and we misnamed many. Okay, let me stop here, okay? So, this is an exclusive interaction that Jesus had with the disciples when they approached him to ask him what will happen this time we leave. And Jesus explicitly explained to them certain events that must take place. One is, there are many, so I just pick up one. There are many people that are going to be called Christian, or so, or people that worship God in the name of Christ. Now today we have different type of Christianity. You have, I don't need to mention all of them, there are many. We have more than 1,000 or 10,000 religion, but among them are Christians, people who profess to be Christians, who profess that Jesus is with them. They worship God and the rest of them. But Jesus said here, we should be careful because in that instance, many of us will be misled. Many of us will be deceived because everybody feels that whenever people are talking about Jesus, Jesus, Jesus is Please, there. if you it's just make just... one, if you just make one point, because you've lost me. If you say too much, I'm not going to be able to understand you. Okay, I don't I'm understand. Sorry. You said there are two types of Christian. There are Christians and there are real Christians. So my answer to you was, yes. where's that in the Bible? Where does it contrast Christians with real Christians? It doesn't talk about Christians or real Christians here. And what is it, the difference between a Christian and a real Christian? Could you just get to the point? As for this passage, Matthew 24, verse 5, for many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and will deceive many. The word Christ, Christos, means the anointed. Now, I don't need to tell you that your governing body claimed that they are the anointed. They are the Christ. They are the anointed ones, one of the 144,000 who alone are the anointed class. Um... So perhaps it's warning me about people like the governing body who claim that they are anointed and that everyone else needs to follow them. There never had been a time governing body claims to be what people say they do. Uh, they made it clear from the scripture, what the scripture talk about people that will go to heaven. Like Revelation chapter 14, verse now, 1. Now you're jumping onto some other totally unrelated thing. Could, could you just stick to the topic? Your book says, as Jehovah's Witnesses, we believe that we are real Christians. Why? My question to you is, do you believe there are real Christians in other groups? I gave you examples, Baptists or Pentecostals. Do you believe there are at least some real Christians in the Baptists or the Pentecostals? It's a simple question. It doesn't require a sort of sermon answer. It, 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 yeah, the truth is that uh, we cannot have two Christians in two groups. It is only one group you can find the true Christians. Okay. That's and as okay. Okay, that's a to the point answer. Thank you for that. Um, your watchtower, fifteenth of November, nineteen eighty one. Watchtower, page twenty one, says, "Quote and while now the witness yet in, and, and while now the witness, uh, yet includes the invitation to come to Jehovah's organization for salvation." So, if I'm correct, am I correct? Your society teaches that only Jehovah's Witnesses are real Christians. Everyone else who claims to be a Christian is actually a false Christian. Is that your position? The truth is that Jehovah right now on earth chooses his witnesses to be the true Christian. They, it, it that's is not, not my true. question I... that wasn't my question i understand when your book says as jehovah's witnesses we believe that we are real christians i understand jehovah's witnesses claim they are real christians you don't need to explain that to me i know that my question is do you believe there are real christians in other groups like the baptists i used to go to a baptist church many years ago do you believe there are some real christians in the baptist yes or no There are no other true Christians in other group. Right. Okay. So your 
Watchtower, 15th of November 1981, page 21, says, quote, And one hour the witness yet includes the invitation to come to Jehovah's Organization for Salvation. So your Watchtower teaches that there's no salvation in any other group. Would I be correct? Um, there's something I would like to mark out to you, because when it comes to judgment, okay, is is Jehovah that laws? So there are certain matters that you and I cannot conclude. Is Jehovah knows how he's going to handle the situation because there are certain people. Yes, but so too do you. You've just told me that there's no real Christians in other groups. So you're also judging when you when you say that. There is no real Christian in other group. Right. That's a judgment. You've just made a judgment when you made that statement, and you're entitled to make that statement. But that is your position. Do you, do, you, you, do you know why I said that? I'm happy to listen. Okay. Please, can you read Revelation chapter 18, verse 4? You read it. You make your point. Okay. Eighteen verse 4. That place says, yeah. I, And I had another voice out of heaven say get out of her my people if you do not want to share with her in her sins and if you do not want to receive part of her place this is not a voice from heaven speak to us if you are still remaining in the babylon the great you get out of her because it's time of judgment have come and that and that anybody found with her will receive part of her judgment or please in a sense other witnesses want to make things clear to people that if you are still in christendom if you are still in babylon the great this is the right time it doesn't say it doesn't say exactly who babylon the great is OK, many religious groups say that Jehovah's Witnesses are part of Babylon the Great. If you speak to the Seventh-day Adventists, they believe that they're the only ones who are true Christians. Everyone else is a false Christian, including Jehovah's Witnesses, be because they hang on. Let me just make my point, because they they meet on Sunday, which Seventh-day Adventists would say is the mark of the beast. So only Seventh-day Adventists and a couple of small uh, groups who meet on a Saturday, the Seventh-day Adventists would regard as true Christians. Then there's other groups. Christadelphians regard you, the Watchtower, as Babylon the Great. Only Christadelphians are the true Christians. Iglesian what? Christu believe that um, their leader, who, who God appointed in 1966, is the faithful and discreet slave. And everyone else, including Jehovah's Witnesses, are an apostasy. There are thousands of groups who say, we're it. We're the real Christians. And everyone else, including Jehovah's Witnesses, are an apostasy. So Jehovah's Witnesses is just one of these groups pointing their finger at everyone else. Okay. Anyway, this is not something we can just say Jehovah Witnesses this, Jehovah Witnesses that, Baptist this, Baptist that. We need to take concise study of God's word in Bible. That is when we are going to get everything much clearer. So we could, you, know. could, could you respond to what I said? Anything I say, you completely ignore. How do you explain the fact that there are thousands of other religious groups, the Mormons, the Christadelphians, the Seventh-day Adventist, Iglesia Ni Christu, extreme TV preachers, who regard everyone else as a false Christian and only their group as the real Christians? How, how do you okay. explain that? And they would go to okay. Revelation 18.4 and say, look, whoa, Babylon the Great. That's everyone else on earth except for us. It, it okay. doesn't, it doesn't how, prove anything, does it? Okay. How I can do that is this. Suppose, for example, we have some, cups of be we have some beans in a, a container. I'm, I'm not interested in beans. I'm seriously, I'm not interested in beans. Could we read paragraph one of your book, please, 
on what basis okay. do Jehovah's Witnesses base their beliefs? If, if you can't answer my question, then please just save time by saying, Robert, I can't answer. I don't want to answer. And we can move on. But I don't want to hear stories or, or, okay. or anything that's not relevant to the question. OK, paragraph one. Jesus said God's word is truth. John seventeen seventeen. Like Jesus, Jehovah's Witnesses have always based their beliefs on God's word. Consider our modern day history. In the late 19th century, a group of Bible students carefully began to examine the Bible. They based their beliefs on what it said, even when those beliefs differed from church doctrines. Then they began sharing those Bible truths with others. Notice it mentions truth twice in this paragraph. There's a star at the end. That's uh, a link to a footnote at the bottom of the page which in the online edition is at the end of the chapter, the end of chapter 19, but in my paper copy, it's at the bottom of page 79. And the footnote says, our principal journal, The Watchtower, has published Bible truth consistently since 1879. So it makes the, it mentions truth for the third time. Now my question is, is this a truthful statement? This book, Enjoy Life Forever, was published in 2021. So when they wrote in 2021, our principal journal, The Watchtower, has published Bible truth consistently since 1879. Is that truth? Is that a truthful statement or is that a lie? Hello, it's network. Sorry, network was for a I didn't hear you well. Hello? Could you say that again, please? Network, network. Network fluctuates. I didn't hear what you asked. Do you hear me? Could you just say that again? It's, you're a little unclear. I say network, network. Let talk? Network. What do you mean, let network. talk? What does that mean? Network is a situation whereby somebody is talking and... It, uh, maybe there's a disconnection from the uh, network cyber that could not enable you to hear what the other person is saying at the moment. Right. Your footnote on page 79 says, Our principal journal, The Watchtower, has published Bible truth consistently since 1879. That's the footnote in page 79, bottom of page 79. In your online version, you'll find it relegated to the end of the chapter. All I'm asking you, is that a truthful statement? This book, Enjoy Life Forever, was published three years ago in 2021. So when it says, our principal journal, The Watchtower, has published Bible truth consistently since 1879, is that a truthful statement, sir? Yes, I can say, of course, yes, because the are journals that are publicly giving people the message from the Bible have never lied. Can I give you an example? They've never lied. The Watchtower yeah. has never lied. Okay. Give me an example of them never lying. Okay. The Watchtower and other publications that speak to people about God, for example, the Bible made it clear that the righteous people are of two class. There will be a class that will go to heaven. Yeah, uh, this, is, will... this, is ir this is irrelevant. Um, I, I do one thing at a time. I'm not jumping on to your belief on the 144,000 in the great crowd. If you want to discuss that with me, another time. Look, back in 18... from 1879 when the first Watchtower was published, until about 1930, the Watchtower publications taught that the second presence of Christ was 1874. Now you'll find that in the book Prophecy, published in 1929, on page 65. It is a little bit more complicated than that because they flip-flopped between 1914 and 1874. But your book, Prophecy, published in 1929 on page 65, says the second presence of Christ is from 1874. Now, surely, sir, that's a lie. It's not the truth. It's a lie. It's a lie in the book, Prophecy. Maybe 
maybe I have noticed such that in the recent time. Okay. Well, why don't you write down the details and look into it? That's all I'm saying. Okay. Yeah. Um, also, uh, until about 1930, you taught that uh, Christ began to rule as king in 1878. Now, today, from about 1930, and again, there's been flip-flops round about 1930 on this, but from about 1930, to make it simple, um, before 1930, the Watchtower taught, for instance, Studies in the Scripture, Volume 4, page 604, that Christ began to rule as king in 1878. Now, that was changed to 1914 in 1930. Surely that's a lie. I mean, Christ either began to rule as king in 1878 or he began to rule as king in 1914. Or, I believe, he began to rule as king at his resurrection. Um, but the, you can't say he began to rule as king in 1878 and he began to rule as king in 1914. One of those statements must be a lie because they're, they're contradictory, sir. Evidently, it, the statement was made when there was no understanding of reigning if Jesus was actually reigning as at that time. So, but so, in the next time, so you admit that the Watchtower a century ago had no understanding. They were clueless men. There were uh, there there was a time that. Uh, those people who were before us now were not did not get comprehensively that particular side of the Bible clearly. That's then, why they made it. Right. They then, made a mistake. Then why does Enjoy Life Forever lie? Because it says our principal journal, The Watchtower, has published Bible truth consistently since 1879. And they know that that's not true. They know that's a lie. The Watchtower used to use the pyramid. For many decades, they used the pyramid to come up with their Bible prophecies that Armageddon was going to happen in 1914. Um, for instance, uh, Studies in the Scripture, Volume 3, page 342. There's different editions of this book where in later editions, they lengthened the length of the corridors of the Great Pyramid of Egypt because... Russell, who was the leader at the time, he went to Egypt and he measured the lengths of corridors in the Great Pyramid of Egypt at Gaza, Giza, not Gaza, Giza. And he determined the corridors were so many pyramid inches in length. And from that, he determined when Armageddon was going to happen in 1914. And of course, when Armageddon didn't happen in 1914, rather than be the end of the time of trouble, 1914 was changed the beginning of the time of trouble in complete contradiction to watchtowers published in the 1890 which said that 1914 would be the end of the time of trouble you know why do i need to listen to people whose interpretation of the bible is false i mean do you I, spend I, your time listening to mormons or christadelphians or seventh-day adventist and if not, why not? Why why don't you spend every waking hour listening to the Mormons and listening to the Pentecostal TV preachers and listening to the Christadelphians and listening to all sorts of different religious groups like that, Iglesia Ni Christu and Seventh-day Adventists? Why don't you spend every waking moment listening to these people? You don't because you believe they're wrong, surely. No, listen, me, I listen to everybody. And we Jehovah's Witnesses as well listen to everyone. Right. But why do you listen to everyone if you believe only Jehovah's Witnesses are real Christians? Why do you listen you to listen people to who people? you believe are false Christians and part of Babylon the Great, which is why you quoted Revelation 18.4? If people are part of Babylon the Great, surely you shouldn't listen to them. No. Don't we preach to every sort of persons? It's not part of listening right, to them. I'm not asking you about who you're preaching to. I'm asking, who do you listen to and take in knowledge from? We listen to me talking to you. I listen to everybody. Okay. No matter who you are. No matter the religion you, you belong to. 
Mm. I mean, I mean, the early the early Jehovah's Witnesses at the time of Russell and and after that, they believe that Jesus Christ became the Almighty God at His resurrection. Now that's in the Watchtower, eighteen ninety three, page one hundred and fifteen. Became the Almighty God. He became Almighty God at His resurrection. Watchtower, eighteen ninety three, page one hundred and fifteen. That's also clearest in Berean Bible Teachers Manual, which was published in 1909 on page 450, 454. It's, um, it, it common, it's a commentary, a brief commentary on Revelation 1 8. And it says that Jesus Christ became Almighty God at his resurrection. And then twice in the Finnish Mystery, published in 1917. Um, it says on page 15 and page 240 that Jesus Christ is Almighty God, meaning he became Almighty God at his resurrection. Now, that's different and to what you teach today. Let me, let me come right now, because if you keep quoting from our previous uh, uh, um, publications, other than the recent, evidently there are some errors in some of them and they have been corrected. Well, okay. hold, hold on. Your book says of Russell and the early Bible students in paragraph one, they base their beliefs on what it said. That's the Bible. Even when those beliefs differed from church doctrine, then they began sharing those Bible truths with others. Your book says that Russell was sharing Bible truths, such as the second presence of Christ was 1874. Christ became king in 1878. Um, you've got to measure the lengths of corridors in the Great Pyramid of Egypt to find out that Armageddon's going to happen in 1914. And when it didn't happen, then, then they said, well, 1914 is the beginning, not the end of the time of trouble. And they taught that Christ became almighty God at his resurrection. I, are you even aware that Jehovah's Witnesses used to um, worship jesus christ until 1953 it was only in the watchtower of the first of january 1954 that the worship of jesus was done away with because they get the understanding of the scripture about jesus jesus rule in jehovah's arrangement R right in right then this book enjoy life forever contains lies because they're saying that russell taught truth but you're telling me, you're admitting to me that actually Russell and the early Bible students taught lies, contrary to the Bible. It's to, it, see, you don't need to understand completely, probably something that somebody said mistakenly as lies, where he later or further made the corrections of what his past speech was. What is nice is, let me tell you what is lies. If I say I am John and I'm not John and I stick to that I'm John, why I'm not John? But if I make correction that later I'm not John, I am Mark. So that is not lie, it's a mistake. The difference between so lies. Are you lies. saying that no religious person lies? No, every religious person makes a mistake. Because you have to be consistent, you have to apply the standards you apply to yourself, to everyone. So are you saying that the Mormons are true Christians, the Christadelphians are true Christians, the Catholics are true Christians, the Pentecostal TV preachers are true Christians, um, Seventh-day Adventists are true Christians, uh, Iglesia and Christo are true Christians, everyone's a true Christian and no one, no one has false doctrine, that they just make mistakes. And why did you earlier say to me that only Jehovah's Witnesses are real Christians? You said there's no real Christians in, in other groups. And you also started to read Revelation 18 verse 4 about Babylon the Great. And you implied that everyone outside of the Watchtower Society is a part of Babylon the Great. I think you're double talking. You know, I think you're trying to pull the wool over my eyes and gaslight me because I don't think you're being honest with me, sir. The Jehovah's Witnesses taught all sorts of ridiculous things they they worshiped jesus until 1953 and then in 1954 they did away with the worship of jesus let me prove that to you the watchtower has various charters 
And the 1945 edition of the Watchtower Charter, the amended charter, on page two, it says, and it's wider than my screen, um, instructors in the Bible, they are instructors in the Bible and Bible literature for the public Christian worship of Almighty God and Jesus Christ. So they are set up for the Christian worship of both Almighty God and Jesus Christ. But from 1954 onwards, the worship was only for the Almighty God only. Now, this is different, you see. What you taught before 1954 about worshipping Jesus is OK, and then it's not OK to worship Jesus after 1954. One of those positions has to be a lie. It's not a mistake. It's pessimistic. It's, pardon? Pessimistic. So, That's a mistake. Right, so that is the mistake. Well then, why is your book, Enjoy Life Forever, lying when it says at the footnote, our principal journal, The Watchtower, has published Bible truth consistently since 1879? I mean, they know that's not true. That's a lie. Um, they are key team of Bible truth. They and are those what? Bible they are what? Truth. They are what? Stood the same. I said they are key teams of Bible key truth. Key teams? And other... Sorry, I'm trying to understand you. They are what? They are key teams, did you say? Yes, key teams of Bible truth. Key teams? I don't know what a key team is. What I'm trying to say that there are significant um, Bible truths. For example... The righteous. Oh, key things. Key things. Okay. Is that what okay. you meant? Did you mean there are key no. things? Yes. Right, okay, I, I understand you. Okay, so that stood the same, that never changed. Which I, I may try to mention to you. Jehovah's Witnesses from all time made it clear that the righteous, now I wanted to point it out before to you, but I didn't have to say it now because it's timely. Could you speak slowly, then I can understand you. I say, right from time, Jehovah Witnesses made it clear to public, everyone, that the righteous people are of two class. I, I'm, I'm been... not interested in that. Look... Look, another thing the early Watchtower did was they promoted warfare. They supported the American military in the First World War. In Zion's Watchtower, 15th of May, 1918, page 6,257 in the green reprints, Rutherford, when he was about to go on trial, to try and use this as a defence in court, he started writing in the Watchtower that the Bible students in America should purchase liberty bonds or liberty loans to support the American war effort. And he talked on the right-hand column, because um, it's quite a long article, he talked about um, people at Bethel paying 25% of their meagre income, they were clubbing together to buy uh, a liberty bond between them. So the Watchtower, 15th of May 1918, page 6,257, promotes supports warfare it supports the american military in warfare i think we have cleared the past that whatever said in the past or not in the past was a mistake then if think... it's a mistake you weren't teaching bible truth your book today enjoy life forever lies about your past when it says our principal journal, The Watchtower, has published Bible truth consistently since 1879, it hasn't. It's been telling lies since 1879, sir. Okay. Now, can I ask you a question? Yes. Suppose we have two doctors. The first doctor operates 10 persons, only one survived. The second one operated the same 10 persons. Only one died. Which of the two would you like to operate on you? I, I, I'm, I'm not interested in doctors. Um, the Watchtower for November 2016, which is a recent publication, it's not even 10 years old, 
Watchtower November 2016, page 29, paragraph 9, talks about the National Day of Prayer. When in 1918, it says that the Bible students joined in prayer for victory in the Great War. That's the First World War. Now, the article doesn't mention that Judge Rutherford, who was the leader at the time, went on a raised platform and he prayed with Catholic priests and Protestant clergymen for victory in the First World War. But that's what actually happened. Unfortunately, we don't have pictures of that event. But Rutherford prayed with um, Protestant clergymen and Catholic priests. I mean, that, you know, why should I trust such an organisation that claims to be neutral in warfare? Suppose um, you can come and take a, a periodic Bible study. I think it will help to clear the air of some certain things you need to know about the Bible truth. But if you base uh, hold your... on, stop, stop, stop. What do you mean, Bible truth? You said it would clear the air and help me to understand Bible truth. What is Bible truth? The Bible truth is the message of God's word written in the Bible. But the Watchtower isn't teaching that. They're teaching man-made doctrines from their governing body, and these. M m man-made doctrines from the governing body change over time okay let me ask you one question name. what doctrine does what doctrine does those churches teach that is in line with the bible well we would we would have to go to another scripture um, the belief that jesus rose from the grave in his physical body would be uh, a central one um, that would be one thing that would be very important to the Christian faith, the physical, bodily resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ from the dead, which the Watchtower denies. It claims he rose as a spirit creature. That's in Lesson 15, Paragraph 3, uh, which I will read, uh, if I can find it. After Jesus' I... life as a human I... ended, he was resurrected as a spirit and he returned to heaven. If I'm, if I'm a little correct, are you trying to say that the churches believe that Jesus was resurrected in a, a, a physical body? Yes, that's not what, in... that, that's what the Bible says. It says he rose in a physical body. He, okay. he rose in the same body that he died in. Let me prove that. It's prophesied in John chapter 2. John chapter 2. Yes, John chapter 2, verse 19 to 22. I will read it when you're there. Please tell me when you're ready, sir. John chapter 2, verse 19. Okay, read. Jesus answered and said to them, Destroy this temple. And in three days, I will raise it up. Verse 20, the Jews are going to completely misunderstand him now. Then the Jews said, it has taken 46 years to build this temple and you will raise it up in three days. Here's the key verse, verse 21. But he was speaking of the temple of his body. Verse 22 then confirms the context is the resurrection. Therefore, when he had, he had risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this to them. And they believe the scriptures and the word which Jesus had said. So it says in verse 19, Jesus said, destroy this temple. And in three days, that's the three days in the tomb, I will raise it up. But verse 21, but he was speaking of the temple of his body. And, and body there is, I believe it's naos. It's a singular and it always refers to a physical human body when it's applied to a man or a woman or a child naos in greek always means a physical body it never means a body made out of spirit or an intangible spirit like like body uh, it is applied to the planets in romans 8 i think 
uh, or is it 1 Corinthians? No, 1 Corinthians um, 15, I think it is. Um, but when it's applied to a human being, it always means a physical body. So it's quite, quite, quite clear. Destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. Verse 19, are verse you, 21. But he was speaking of the temple of his body. Are you trying to bring it to your own understanding? Just Not address to, the text. OK, don't, when, don't waste time. Address the text. Address John 2.19 and John 2.21. Jesus says, no... Des destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Okay, what is this temple? He's using there a figure no... of speech, and John 2.21 says, but he was speaking of the temple of his body. So he's talking about his resurrection of his physical body from the dead after three days. There's no much to take from there. It's very simple. That the, 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 the temple he's talking about is, is in himself, that if when he will be killed that in three days he will be resurrected and jesus was not saying that when he will be resurrected he's going to be resurrected in the same body as a physical person because when jesus was resurrected he began to appear to different locations to individuals of his disciples but when jesus was not dead he wasn't appearing to different number of his disciples for you to see that the what the bible or what the watchtower have published both in recent and in the past is truth that jesus body jesus resurrected as a spirit person not as a physical person it anymore. doesn't it doesn't because say that it doesn't say that and i might have got the greek word wrong because i'm very tired it's way way past midnight here in the uk and I'm rather tired. John 2, 19. I'm looking at the Kingdom Interlinear Translation. Uh, verse 21. It, sorry, yes, I got the word wrong. Somatikos. So it's soma for body. I, I don't know what I said earlier. I'm rather, rather tired. I can't quite remember. So it's somatikos, which always means Robert Gundry did a word study on this word. And he, he proved that every time it's used in the New Testament and applied to a human being, it always means a physical body. So Christ is saying, destroy this temple. That's a figure of speech. And in three days, that's the three days in the tomb, I will raise it up. Verse 21. But he was speaking of the temple of his body. And Soma always means a physical body. So he's saying he's going to rise from the dead in the same body that died, not a different body. And not multiple bodies, because the Jehovah's Witnesses claim he rose as a spirit body, and then he created about ten temporary physical bodies. So he created numerous physical bodies, which is um, contrary to what the text says. I don't think we have much thing to talk about this than Jesus was resurrected in a spirit body, which is very, very clear. Where? Um, if you if you go back a few verses to Luke 24 um, verse 39 Jesus says that he has risen in a physical body uh, Luke 24 verse 39 behold my hands and my feet that it is I myself handle me and see for a spirit does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. So he's, he couldn't be clearer. It's, it's I myself. This isn't a ghost or a manifestation of him. It's Jesus himself. He says, handle me and see. Well, why would he do that if he's a spirit creature? He says, handle me and see. Because he, he says, yeah, I can hear all sorts of noise at your end are you moving the phone or something um he says in verse 40 when he had said this he showed them his hands and his feet why because they had the marks of crucifixion in them because it's the same body with the marks of crucifixion and then he says for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see i have luke 24 39 so the christian position is that jesus rose from the grave in the same body that he died in person denies that then they're they're teaching another gospel sir i'm hearing you 
I'm trying to make some research about uh, that. Do you have any response to Luke twenty four thirty nine to forty? Luke, okay. I was trying to, I was there making research. Let me, let me come back there, okay? Luke what? Luke 24, verse 39 and 40. Why would he say, why did he show them his hands and his feet? Why does he say, handle me and see? Luke, he, does that, right? he does that because his hands and his feet bear the marks of crucifixion. Luke, lie, right? Hello? What are you saying? Hello? I didn't get you. He said Luke chapter what? Oh gosh. Luke twenty four thirty nine to forty. Why don't when you speak to people? Can I give you a tip? Have a pen by you and a piece of paper and write down what the other person says. Then you don't have to keep asking over and over again for the reference. Let me get. I'm there right now. Okay. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, that's okay. Um, I mean, his hands and his feet bore nail prints in them. In John 20, verse 25, the other disciples therefore said to him, we have seen the Lord. But he, that's Thomas, said to them, unless I see in his hands the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Then verse 26, and after eight days, his disciples were again inside and Thomas with them. Jesus came, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, peace to you. Verse 27, then he said to Thomas, reach your finger here and look at my hands and reach your hand here and put it into, I uh, into, inside my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. Now, why is Jesus telling Thomas to inspect his hands and put his hand into his side unless he's telling Thomas to look at the marks of crucifixion. Can't you see that the body that Jesus rose in bore the marks of crucifixion because it was the same body that died on the tree and then resurrected again after three days? OK, I'm getting you right, OK? I'm getting your own. Do you have any okay. response? Mm, I'm I'm trying to get uh, grasp to exactly what Jesus was like saying here. Yeah. Evidently, when he rose up and met the disciples, so he already knew that someone would doubt whether it was him. Okay. And then I showed him evidence that yes, he 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 was the one, because Jesus' hands was was um, paired with nail, and there is a hole in between the hands. Okay, and he now used that an evident demonstration to prove to Thomas who was doubting whether really he is the one, and then made it clear to him that. Uh, is still him, the same person that on of that were was that was with them before he died. So it's it's very clear. I got the point here. Okay. So, so the, 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 the point I made is that he showed Thomas the nail prints in his hands, and told Thomas to put his hand into his side because he had the marks of crucifixion on his body. So he must have risen in the same body that he died in because it bore the marks of crucifixion. Why would a new body bear the marks of crucifixion? That would be deceptive, wouldn't it? That would be lying. No, um, no problem. I got what he is talking about. I was he makes some of that critical um, research respecting Jesus' resurrection another thing that follows up okay 
thanks for bringing this up. I really appreciate it. Yeah, okay. Well, thank you very much, sir. It's been lovely speaking to you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye. Okay.